Um, David said this. He said this about the beginning of his life. And, and I want to play off of this, of what I want to say here today. It says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. Now, if you could read the whole Psalm 51, you'd do well. And uh, because it talks about the loving kindness and the mercy of God and how God restored David and so on. And it's a prayer of repentance and how David repented. It's a great psalm. But he said, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. It's really important that we understand something, I believe, in this day, is that we start this life of ours with limitations, but when we have an encounter with the Lord, we move from limitation to enlargement. You see, life brings us into this earth, and we are all born sinners. Come on. And that's what David is referring to here. Uh, he's shaped in iniquity, and, uh, and, and, and his mother conceived him in sin because I don't know if his mother was a sinner, but in all likelihood. But in the reality is, is David was reflecting to the fact that we've all come as sinners. So our beginning is one that oftentimes is where we are poised for a period of time until we have an encounter with God and then that day changes the whole world around us. How many of you know when you met the Lord, things begin to change? Now, it's when we move from lack to fullness, from barrenness to fruitfulness, it's when we learn that whatever we offer to God, he'll fill it. How many of you know whatever you give to God, he'll fill it? Like the ditches, the dry ditches that Israel was told to dig by the prophet, they were filled as they dug the ditches. Have you heard that? You see, so when God comes in, because God is so big, he's omnipotent. God is omniscient. God is so big that he can't come in without filling it. He can't come in your heart and, and you don't get a little. See, when God comes in, it's like a balloon. If I had a balloon this morning and I blew it up, God comes in and he fills that balloon with every bit of himself. Come on. So when we say, Lord, uh, come in my life, a lot of preachers will preach things like, you know, you get a little bit of God and then you get more and then you get more. Well, look, saints, I don't find that in the scripture. When God comes in, he fills everything that he comes into. If he comes in your heart today because you're not saved, he will fill your heart. If he comes into your time, he'll fill your time. Come on. You see, but a lot of us, we don't invite God because we know that about God. God is pushy. God takes over. Come on. It's like inviting a massive bull elephant to come in your living room or kitchen. He fills it. See, some of you came into the world with limitations. You met God, but you've chosen to keep your limitations rather than let God fill you and replace your limitations with expectations. Come on. And those expectations will turn into enlargement in every area. Now, let's look. First of all, Jacob. I'll give you three guys to look at. Jacob, whose name literally means heel catcher and supplanter, he cheated his older brother Esau out of his blessing from their father that normally was reserved for the firstborn son. That's what he did. He, 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 he cheated. He cheated his, his older brother because his name meant supplanter or con artist. Okay? Now, Jacob fled from Esau to another country, a county uh, uh, area, because he was trying to escape Esau's wrath. Okay? And, and you need to understand something. De uh, Jacob was born with those limitations and that condition. How many of you hear that? Now, you know there's a lot of Christians today that are born with bad conditions. 
But somewhere along the line, we have to come to a place of an encounter with God that we change those limitations into something great. And too many of God's people choose to stay the way they were when they came. How many of you hear that? See, when God comes, he fills every area. How many of you know he fills those areas that you lack? He fills those, those uh, bad areas with good. We heard uh, Wednesday night, good is better than bad. God fills every area of our life. But how many of you know a lot of Christians are still holding on to a lot of areas that he's not allowed to come in and fill? Are you listening? Now, finally, Jacob decided to return home, and that's when he faced his brother. And on the way home, Jacob has an encounter with the angel of the Lord. Come on. And really, that was Jesus. And Jacob demanded, he wrestled with the angel all night long, didn't know that, you know, who, what it was, and he wrestled with this man all night long, and before the, as the day was breaking, Jacob said to him, do not leave until you give me a blessing. How many of you hear that? Jacob had come to the place where he said, God, I need you to bless my life. Come on. How many of you know that there are times in our lives that we have to come to the conclusion that the way we've done things and the things that we've been going through are really the product of our own doing. And we have to decide it's time for a change. It's time for something to change in my life because I don't want to keep going the same way I've been going, getting the same results I've gotten. See, and Jacob comes to that place and he, he finds out he's wrestling with the angel of God uh, who is Jesus and he says, you know, I'm not letting go of you. Until you give me a blessing. Now look what happens. Jacob gets the blessing and, and the angel, this is the man who, <laughs> who, a man who cheated his way to the top. Now he becomes a man who rose to the top by divine favor. Because Jacob asked for a blessing from God, he was enlarged, he changed his limitations, the expectations, which led to enlargement. See, when you got enough of God, you don't have to go, let me call the preacher up, let me get somebody to come, let me get somebody to help me. No, you got enough of him in you to go to work tomorrow and start a revolution. You got enough of God in you to walk down the street and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But some of you only flirt with God. You ain't married to him. It's time to get filled with God. Come on, how many of you want to enjoy your life? Witnessing at work, sharing Jesus, testify, sing the song of the Lord. I'm in, I'm in Kmart. In Kmart, yeah, I was in Kmart. I'm walking down the aisle speaking in tongues. And somebody said, where are you from? What, land, what country are you from? Boy, I had a hard time figuring that out, how to tell her that. Come on, saints. Come on, don't you want to have enough of God in you that you can walk down the street and somebody wants what you have? You see, because you got to wrestle with God and not let go. You got to hold on to God. You got to decide that your prayer is going to change your nature and character and you're going to get a prayer life that says, okay, God, I'm serious about this. Enlarge me, enlarge me, stretch me out here so I got enough of you in me that whatever I do, I can fill the place I go to. And then you got to decide to give birth to a whole new attitude of life. You got to give birth uh, to something that's different inside of you. You got to give birth to something that's got life in it. 